Hi, shalom everyone. Good evening po sa ating lahat. Muli ay nagpapasalamat tayo sa Panginoon sa oras at araw na ito na atin po muling patuloy na pag-aralan ang kanyang salita sa ating weekly Bible study at uh, nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon sa kanyang patnubay muli for the whole week at uh, siya ang ating kalakasan, siya ang ating gabay sa buong Uh, linggo na to at uh, tayo muli ay nakatapos ng isang linggo. Salamat sa Panginoon sa kalakasan, sa patnubay, sa gabay for the, for the whole week again. At uh, bago po tayo magumpisa ay atin pong hilingin ang patnubay ng ating banal na Holy Spirit para bigyan tayo ng understanding, bigyan tayo ng wisdom upang intindihin ang kanyang salita. So, let us all uh, pray. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Good evening, our Father. Good evening, Lord. Yeshua Hamaseya. Good evening, Holy Spirit. Once again, Panginoon, we just want to praise you and thank you for uh, your goodness, your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord God, for this week again that was uh, finished. Thank you, Lord God, for all your protection, for your guidance. Salamat Panginoon, narating na naman namin ang gabing ito upang patuloy kaming mag-aral sa inyong salita. We pray Father God for your Holy Spirit to guide us, to give us the wisdom, understanding, O Lord God, as we again ponder on your words. I pray God that you'd open our hearts, our minds, O God, to whatever you want us to learn tonight. Thank you, dear Lord, for how you are going to bless us your holy words. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So our topic for tonight is about facing impossibilities by faith. Facing impossibilities. Ano ba ang mga sa buhay natin bilang tao, bilang anak ng Diyos, hindi po palaging Masaya, hindi po palaging okay ang ating sitwasyon, di ba? Dumarating din tayo sa, mga, sa punto ng buhay natin na we face a lot of uh, trials, we face struggles in life, na kahit pa minsan okay yung finance natin, pero in other areas of our lives, minsan humahinaharap, may kinakaharap tayo ng mga pagsubok. And the... Uh, I thank the Lord because this topic is indeed had blessed me. And I just want to share it to you. Kung paano ako na bless sa, sa topic na to, I know that God will also bless, bless each and every one of us who will, who will listen to, this, uh, to His holy words tonight. And the, our text is found in Mark chapter 5 verse 22 to 34. Uh, as we go on, hindi ko na babasahin. As we go on, babasahin ko naman every uh, verse of this uh, of the text. So, uh, as we start, I know that uh, God is continually working in each and every one of us. Sa gabi-gabi nating uh, pag pag uh, dinig, pagkinig sa mga live streaming, iba-iba yung mga kung paano mangusap ang Panginoon sa atin. And uh, as uh, we start this topic, facing impossibilities by faith, there are so many impossibles for us as human na posible sa Panginoon. So there are times in our lives as believers when we are faced with a seemingly impossible situation. How do we conduct ourselves during those times? Why does God allow them? Bakit ba uh, minsan di ba hindi natin maiwasan na na magtanong? Just last week ay isang pastor sa Nueva Vizcaya na na aksidente na tapos dead on the spot. So minsan we question bakit nangyari yun? Naalagad mo naman siya but But then, there are things na gusto rin ipaintindi sa atin ng ating Panginoon. As we go on to our topic, we will learn a lot of His uh, 
words tonight. Amen. So the Bible is filled with impossible, hopeless cases, situations, and circumstances appear in the Word of God. And so many of them appear impossible. There seems to be no solution. Storms, needs, deaths, sicknesses, and many other situations that to the human mind are impossible yet they are handled with ease by the power of a sovereign god amen tonight i want to talk about facing the impossibilities by faith there are a lot of common words that we used to hear marami ito yung ito yung mga usual words na paragi nating naririnig sa mga tao na medyo dismayado na, sa mga tao na medyo uh, nawawala na ng pag-asa, we often hear these words like, example, yung there is no way, wala nang pag-asa. Diba? Minsan marinig natin na kahit na anong gawin mo sa kanya, talagang ganyan na yan, wala nang pag-asang magbago yan. Diba? Yung bang binibigyan, tayo, binibigyan natin ng tuldok, Minsan ang pagbabago ng isang kapatid. Amen? At isa pa is, this won't work. ba? Diba? Minsan naririnig natin na, ah, hindi ito uubra sa kanya. Kahit pa i-Bible study mo siya, kahit pa dalhin mo siya simbahan, nako, hindi na talaga magbabago yan. Gaya, ganyan na talaga yung taong yan. So, uh, another one is, it, it's impossible. Di ba minsan, sa, naku, imposible ang magamot na yan dahil terminal uh, cancer na yan, stage 3 na yan, kaya imposible, aantayin na niyang mamatay. So, ganun. It's, there are things na we we put an end, di ba? I can't do it. Sa ating, di ba, sa ating fasting, we we fast every Wednesday and Friday, minal Minsan, uh, for us, mahirap, hindi ko kaya dahil nagtatrabaho ako. I cannot do it. May mga bata akong inaalagaan, nagtatrabaho ako, mainit, hindi ko kaya. So, yun, yung, yung mga words na we, we say na hindi ko kaya. Amen? And then, another word is, I can't handle it. Hindi ko na kaya ang sitwasyon ng buhay ko. Hindi ko, kan, hindi ko na kaya ang buhay na nang ganito na may asawa, magulo. Di ba? And then another one, another word na we used to hear is I can't keep keep on going. Hindi ko kaya na mabuhay na wala ka, wala siya. Amen. Da kahit na alam na natin na may asawa siya, alam na natin na lasing ko siya pero dahil nga napamahal na siya sa atin kaya hindi ko talaga kaya kahit na sabihin na, na nakarinig na tayo sa salita ng Panginoon na hindi pwede we, it is a sin na makipagrelasyon sa taong may asawa pero sasabihin natin hindi ko I can't keep I can't keep on going I'm not gonna make it hindi ko kayang mawala siya yun yung mga kataga na lagi na natinig sa mga tao na siguro yung kulang sa pananampalataya or kulang yung yung trust sa gagawin ng Panginoon sa buhay nila. Amen. So this word sounds familiar to anybody. They are the words of defeat and pessimism. Pessimism is lang, is a uh, is like a worse outcome. And yet they are words that all of us do battle from time to time. Amen. So some of us might be facing a situation right now that you think is humanly possible. So many, many uh, times in our lives na sabihin natin na imposible. Imposible na talaga na magamot ito, di ba? Imposible na talaga na siya magbago. Lahat sa atin, on our human thinking, these are impossible. Amen. From your standpoint, it is humanly impossible for you to handle. My dear brothers and sisters, this message is specifically for you. I don't know who you are. Hindi ko po, hindi po, ko po kayo kilala. Kung, kung may mga naririnig na hindi ko 
hindi ko kilala, hindi ko alam ang mga sitwasyon natin sa buhay natin, although kilala, minsan kilala kita in by name, pero hindi ko alam kung ano yung pinagdadaanan mo, God has something for you tonight. At uh, maybe, perhaps we have problems in our finances, in our marriage, or loss of job, or other problems that seems very imp impossible to fix. Pero I want us to listen tonight to what the, the word of God will gonna speak to us. Amen? So, one truth that demonstrates itself over and over is the pages of the Bible is the truth that God is more than adequate for every situation. Marami po yung imposible sa atin pero posible sa Panginoon. Amen? There are no impossible situations with God. There are no hopeless or, or difficult with the Lord. Your situation is not hopeless. Your storm is not hopeless. Your sin is not hopeless. Your sickness is not hopeless. Your loss of your loved ones are not hopeless. Nothing is hopeless and impossible with the Lord. Amen. Our text describes another hopeless situation. So, yung text natin in Mark chapter 5 verse 22 to 34 is about the woman with an issue of blood. So alam po natin yan, very familiar itong story na to. But somehow I know that there is a different thing that God will teach us tonight about this story. And uh, so as we continue, Jesus is on his way to heal the daughter of a man by the name of Jairus. Ang Panginoon ay papunta siya kasi Jairus, si Jairus, isa sa mga... Parang tao, uh, we will read, ma babasahin natin mamaya kung ano yung, ano ang position ni Jairus sa, sa government. So, Jairus fell at the feet of Jesus as he stepped from ship to shore, telling Jesus to come to the aid of his daughter. Ito yung sitwasyon. Amen? Quickly, because his daughter is in the verge of death. Mark describes the pleading of the father and we can almost feel the intensity of the situation without delay. The Lord Jesus made his way to the home of this dying girl. So papunta si Jesus, si Yeshua Hamaseya sa bahay ni Jairus dahil pinakiusapan ni Jairus na pupunta siya sa bahay niya dahil ang kanyang anak ay ano na 50-50 malapit nang mamatay. So, alam niya at narinig niya na ang Panginoon ay had healed many sick people, many blind were able to see. So, narinig niya. So, inimbitan niya ang ating, ang Panginoon na sabi niya, quick, quickly, we, we have to go to our, to my house kasi ang anak ko ay nasa bingit ng kamatayan. So, on the way there, he is surrounded by a great crowd of people they uh, they threw him and just against him every side so he is surrounded by a great crowd ang daming tao so, kasi syempre di ba kapag kapag tayo ay uh, ang tao kasi kapag nakarinig tayo ng mga ng isang tao na nag nag, nag gumagawa ng himala or na, naghihil na nag gumagamot Diba, ang ah, halos siguro hindi mo masabi na wala kang sakit. Lahat siguro tayo may mga karamdaman. So, whenever we we hear that there is somebody who is healing the sick, syep, ang tao dudumog du yan. Pupuntahan talaga ang kung sino yung sinasabi na nagagamot. So, it was a crowd. Thousands of people are crowding nung, nung nakita nila na si Jesus na papunta sa bahay ni Jairus. So in the crowd that day, there was a poor, weak, timid, dying woman who reached out and touched Jesus, Yeshua. When she touched the Lord, her life was instantly, completely, and permanently transformed. 
So kung paano nangyari yun is papag-aralan natin ngayon. So itong, itong babaeng ito, this woman has an issue of blood for 12 years. Sa, uh, sa Mark chapter 5 verse 24 to 26, basahin natin. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. So itong babaeng ito is na dinudugo siya sa sa ating mga mga babae alam po natin yan di ba so dinudugo siya for 12 years of her life can you just imagine imagine niyo di ba kung tayo pag yung dinatnan tayo yung yung 3 days 4 days parang na, na, ano na tayo na, na na yung hindi tayo we don't feel comfortable kasi nga yung bang ano hindi ta talaga tayo comfortable yung iba nga eh minsan nagdi-disminorya yung iba hindi na makasimba dahil nga hindi ka talaga yu minsan masama yung pakiramdam mo can you just imagine this woman has every day in in 12 years she's she was having a flowing of blood in her body so grabe yung sufferings niya her affliction sa verse 25 we are told that she suffered from an issue of blood. This literally means that she was having hemorrhage or bleeding for some place in her body. The word issue means a flowing of blood. Tuloy-tuloy na pagdaloy ng dugo sa kanyang katawan. It may mean that she suffered from a menstrual flow that never ceased. Whatever caused this internal hemorrhage, she was a very sick woman. The verb tense indicates that it was a continual flow of blood. Her, her disease was like a scourge or a great suffering constantly beating her down day by day. So we are told that, uh, we are also told that she tried all the remedies of all physicians of her day, pero walang nangyari pinuntahan niya na lahat ng alam niya na magagaling na doktor she spent all her money para lang ipagamot pero walang nangyari so can you just imagine you know yung di ba kapag dinudugo ka ng ganun for every day it talagang manghihina ka she, baka payat na payat na siguro siya or very pale siya di ba yung Imaginin mo talagang ma mawawalan ka ng dugo for 12 years. Yung isang buwan, ano na yan? You can be, you know, you can be very pale, you can you can even die. Pero itong babaeng ito, grabe yung pinagdadaanan niya 12 years at araw-araw na dinudugo, hindi po yung monthly. Hindi po yung monthly na 3 days lang, 5 days lang, araw-araw na nag-flow-flow ang dugo sa kanyang katawan. So can, you, can, can we just imagine her, her suffering? Amen? Sa so social suffering, he, she also suffered in her social life. Why? How? She was almost certainly not married because through simple physical contact, she would have defiled her husband. Siguro hindi na siya nakapag-asawa dahil, di ba? Kapag dinarat na ng isang babahi, hindi po maganda na gagamitin ka ng asawa mo. So, Baka hindi na siya nakapag-asawa. She could not also work with others because of the danger of defilement. Yung kasi sa, sa, sa ano nila noon, sa, sa law, hindi pwedeng kapag dinudugo ang isang babae, hindi ka muna magtrabaho. Even kahit nga sa fasting, hindi ka mag, pwedeng mag-fasting because they consider you as yung bang uh, madumi. Amen? This reduced her to a life of begging scraps of food from a distance her condition left her on the fringe of society in the eyes of those around her she was no better than a leper parang mas grabe pa siya sa isang tao na may leprosy alam mo yung alam natin yung leprosy na sakit di ba yung yung bang sa skin disease na wala nang gamot na nakakahawa nakakadiri para mas sobra pa doon yung yung ano yung nararanasan ng babaeng ito hindi siya makapagtrabaho 
hindi siya, hindi siya pwedeng lumapit sa ibang tao dahil bawal noon no, 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 during those times bawal kapag dina, uh, dinudugo ka she also, she also suffered emotional suffering since the Bible says that she had been this way for 12 years and considering the average span in those days it is safe to assume that she has probably been this way since just after poverty she has lived her life moving from one rejection to another she is lonely isolated and desperate mag isa siya kasi nga hindi siya pwedeng lahat ng mahawakan niya will be defiled will be considered made defile or ma they will consider as madumi sa kaya hindi siya pwedeng may kasalamuha sa tao hindi siya pwedeng may kasama siya she was alone for 12 years amen grabe yung can you just imagine ilagay natin yung, yung sitwasyon natin sa babae ito ang hirap so emotionally talagang na, ang hirap yung sitwasyon niya and also in religious he has suffered religious suffering yung uh, dahil nga dinudugo siya under the law sa Leviticus this poor woman was to be considered unclean anything or anyone that she touched was also considered unclean as a result she she could not mingle with other people anyone who come in contact with her should not worship in the woman's court or of the temple because she was unclean at siya mismo hindi siya pwedeng pupunta sa temple dahil lahat nga ng mahawakan lahat ng mapuntahan niya they will consider it unclean wow grabe so paano po ang buhay mo kapag lahat na lang bawal hindi ka pwedeng lumabas hindi ka pwedeng punta sa simbahan para magdasal it was so very desperate ang buhay niya mga kapatid and she also suffered financial suffering hindi siya pwedeng magtrabaho because hindi nga pwedeng makisalamuha sa ibang tao so she cannot work the bible tells us that she spent all she had kung yung tanging ipon niya na ubos sa kapapadoktor pinuntahan niya na lahat ng kilala niyang magagaling na doctors but nothing happened So the doctors and their useless remedies had not helped her. All they had done was drain her to the yung finance niya. She was so drained. Wala talaga siyang kapera-pera. She has been left penniless and destitute with no husband or children to look after her. Wow. This is such an, a hopeless situation of a woman. So after years of pain, Worthless doctors, useless remedies, and shattered dreams. She had reached the place where she knows she is living under a death sentence. Wala na pong pag-asa mga kapatid. Paano? Wala na siyang pera para mag, ma, mag, tumingin uli sa ibang doktor. Hindi na makapagtrabaho and she is continually suffering from this flowing of blood. So, unti, she already... Alam na niya na inaantay na lang niya ang kamatayan niya. Amen? She will not get better. She knows that she will die with, with this disease. Her life is literally draining out of her body little by little till day by day. So, grabe. In our situation, we may be suffering in other areas of our lives. Sometimes, finance. Sometimes okay tayo sa finance pero sa emotion minsan may na, hindi tayo makaintindihan sa families or to our brother, to our sister or to our husband pero at least by yung other parts only not every part, not every area of our lives ay talagang hopeless gaya ng babae na ito. And as we put ourselves in in her situation napakahira parang siguro sa atin pag hindi na makayanan parang gusto mo nang magpakamatay mamatay ka na lang but she didn't give up amen so this woman's situation is a picture of believers who are laboring under heavy burden 
Many of God's children are discouraged and defeated today. Minsan nga okay tayo sa financial, okay tayo sa sa ating buhay, sa ating physical, pero minsan inside us we may be okay outwardly but minsan nandun yung pain. Nandun yung 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 suffering natin inside. Amen. You have tried everything in your power to get better. You have tried everything you know to fix your situation. You've read all the books, listened to all preachers and live streamings and got advice from the best sources. But you are not getting better. Minsan, di ba, may mga tao na ganun. So, kaya nakakapagtaka na minsan mga pastors pa mismo nagpapakamatay. Why? Because they are, they feel drained in the inside. They may be well outwardly but in the inside parang namamatay na sila there are they, they are suffering on the inside because maybe of some uh depressions or emotional may mga emotional suffering amen and their life is a mess up as it ever was if that describes one of us just keep on seeking and listening to god it may be that tonight the lord will gonna speak to us amen so as we continue in verse 27 to 28, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Amen. So our text tells us about how this woman came to Jesus. Maybe she had heard how he had healed a leper. Diba, narinig siguro ng babaeng to na kahit na mag-isa siya sa bahay niya, siguro narinig niya na usap-usapan ng mga tao na ay, may, may, ano, may tao na ang dami niyang pinagaling. May mga blind ay na, nakakita. Ang mga, he, he cast out so many demons in, in, in the lives of people. So, he was, nabuhayan siya ng loob. So, nagkaroon siya ng hope. Sabi niya, kailangan kong mamit ang taong ito. So she decided, uh, maybe she had heard about that, that wild, that man just across the lake that Jesus had delivered from a legion of demons and other miracles she heard about Jesus. So upon hearing this, she decided to meet the Lord Yeshua. Amen. She came to realize that Yeshua was were her only hope in her situation. She believed with all her heart that she could just get to him, she would be healed. She displayed her determination to get to Jesus by approaching him in that crowd. As she elbowed her way through the people, she was causing ceremonial defilement for everyone she touched. But it didn't hinder her to go and meet Jesus. Nakita natin yung, yung determination niya na makita ang ating Panginoon. Maybe she was so weak. Dahil 12, 12 years siya na, 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 na dinudugo. So she might be, ang hirap siguro sa kanya na tumayo para, para lang imit ang Panginoong Yeshua. And with the crowd, Ang hirap makisiksikan, di ba? Kaya nakakaroon ng stampid minsan dahil dahil siksikan ang mga tao kapag may narinig sila na na, na, na tao na mga popular, mga celebrity sala makipagsiksikan or gan, ganun siguro ang sitwasyon noon sa panahon ng Panginoon. This time na narinig ng mga tao, people dinumog siya ng mga tao and this poor woman wanted so much to see Jesus. Na kahit na hirap na hirap siya, she was so weak, she was, she was so desperate, but she knew from her heart that Jesus, Yeshua, is her only hope. So, in our situation, mga kapatid, di ba, once a week, we go to church for our, to meet the Lord. Diba? Pag every Friday dito sa Dubai we go to church every Sunday sa ibang lugar sa Pilipinas at sa ibang lugar it is their Sabbath day is during Sunday pero minsan sa atin mga kapatid kapag 
masakit lang ang ulo mo or medyo masama lang ang pakiramdam, naku, hindi na tayo pupunta sa simbahan, di ba? Pero this woman had had showed her determination na kahit very weak siya, kahit na hindi na kaya ng katawan niya, but she was determined to meet the Lord. Nandun yung excitement niya because she knew that something will happen when she meets the Lord. Ganon din po ba yung excitement natin? Tuwing pupunta tayo sa church to meet the Lord. Amen? Na kahit na kung minsan uh, masama yung pakiramdam natin, minsan tinatamad tayo dahil ang init-init, di ba, during summer. Minsan tinatamad tayo dahil pagod tayo for the whole week. Kaya, parang ayaw mo munang magsimba. Pero tignan natin yung buhay ng babae na to. She was so excited and determined to meet Jesus. Sana po ganon yung excitement natin tuwing makinig tayo sa salita ng Panginoon. Sa tuwing tayo ay, uh, tuwing, Da, parating na ang Friday, nandun dapat yung, yung determination natin, yung excitement natin, yung eagerness natin to go to the church of God to meet the Lord. Amen? To listen to His words. Hallelujah! So this should be our attitude whenever we go to church. But sad to say that we often do the contrary. Konting ano lang, hindi na magsimba. Konting masakit lang, ah, ano, nasusuka ako, ay medyo... May lagnat ako kung hindi na magsimba. Amen? So nakita natin ang sacrifice ng babae to, babaeng ito. She was taking a great risk. Isa pa na ginawa ng babaeng ito ay ano, kapag nalaman at may nakakilala sa kanya na she was being touched kasi hindi pwedeng hindi ka, hindi ka ma- hindi pwede na hindi mo ma-touch yung mga tao dahil siksikan nga. So, being a defiled woman dahil dinudugo siya, kailangan niya makipagsiksikan. Although it is a risk for her dahil pwedeng makilala siya at maari siyang i-report sa, na, sa government. Tapos ang, ang law noon is anyone who will cause defilement will be stoned to death. So, she took the risk in coming to Jesus just to meet Yeshua. Bahala na. Basta gusto kong mamit ang Panginoon dahil alam ko na may gagawin siya sa akin. May mangyayari sa buhay ko kapag namit ko ang aking ang Panginoon, ang aking uh, si Yeshua. Yun yung nasa puso niya. Hindi na niya inintindi kung ano man ang mangyari, kung matuklasan man nila, makilala man siya at batuhin siya para mamatay siya, hindi na niya yun inintindi. Amen? So she would have been subjected to public humiliation and ridicule when they will kapag makilala siya. A crowd like that may have beat her or stoned her to death, pero hindi yun ang naging hadlang sa kanyang pagpunta at pag sa ating Panginoon. Amen? Have you reached that place in your life, mga kapatid, that you have, and have you come to understand that Yeshua is our only hope? Have you never, have you ever trusted Him for our salvation? Then we need to come to Him. Kung hindi pa natin, kung may nakari, nari, nari, nakikinig sa gabing ito na hindi pa niya inentrust ang kanyang buhay sa Panginoon, this is now the time. Jesus is our only hope. Nakakalungkot ang mga nangyari sa, sa Pilipinas na talagang from zero, back to zero, lahat ng mga ari-ari ang pinagpaguran. Maging naki, nakita ko si, si uh, uh, Nadia Montenegro na umiiyak dahil lahat ng mga kagamitan nila, bahay nila ay talagang binaha and she said, hindi ko alam kung Christian siya sa, sa, dahil sabi niya na wala man ang lahat pero buhay pa rin ako and I thank the Lord for the life na I'm still alive, nakasurvive pa rin ako so ma, wala yung mga material na yan dahil yan ay mawawala sabi ni Nadja but I thank the Lord because I'm still alive ganun po dapat ba diba? so Alam po natin that in every situation we have right now, Jesus is our only hope. 
nakakalungkot sa Pilipinas and I think I I'm praising God because so many are helping them lalo na sa kagayan po na hanggang ngayon hindi pa humuhupang talagang gutom na yung mga tao and there are a lot of good people who whom God is using to help them amen so we need Jesus Jesus Yeshua is our only hope why should we we need the touch of Jesus to be well like this woman why should we carry the burden one more step why should we fight our battle with our own strength when jesus can do it for us why should we live defeated for another day you don't have to we have we just have to go to yeshua he is our only hope in our situation amen So sa ipagtuloy po natin sa verse 29 and 34. 29 to 34, Holy Spirit bless your holy words. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing him in himself that power had gone out of him. Turn around in the crowd and said, Who touched me? 31. But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude throwing you, thronging, thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him, and told him the whole truth and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed in your affliction hallelujah so nakita natin dito when when she was near enough to him she reached out with trembling hand and touched his garment she probably touched one of the long tassels hanging from the corners of God's cloth and she was completely healed. Ito po yung yung, yung tassel doon po sa talit, di ba? May uh, alam po natin na may ta so, doon sa talit meron siyang uh, tassel sa isa po dito siguro yung natouch ng babae na uh, kaya na heal siya. Naka nakalagay po ka sa ano ng Panginoon. Then in that very inst instant moment, she received what none of the doctors or their costly painful remedies could give her. She was healed instantly. She felt the change in her body and she knew she was a different woman from that moment on. Amen. Hallelujah. So as soon as this as soon as this woman touched him, Jesus knows what has happened. He willed it. He knows that a virtue has gone out to him. Jesus knows what happened and he asked the question, Who touched my clothes? So, alam ng Panginoon, I am very sure na alam ng Panginoon na <coughs> Excuse me po, kung sino yung nagtouch sa kanya. Pero tinanong pa rin niya dun sa mga disciples, sino ang natouch sa akin? Kasi naramdaman niya na there is power. There is yung may lumabas sa kanya na power. So, she knows that somebody has touched him. Amen? So, sabi ng mga disciples, parang, ano ba, ano ba ang Panginoon? Bakit niya tanungin? Sa daming tao na nakaka, naka, diba, syempre, with the crowd, lahat dumidikit sa kanya. Tapos tatanungin niya kung sino yung, yung naka, nakahipo or nagtat sa kanya. So, that, yung, mga, yung reaction ng mga disciples nung tanungin siya is, they were, yung napaka-awkward or napaka, ano naman ang Panginoon? Parang, it's a stupid question na tanungin pa niya na kung sino yung nagtats eh ang daming tao sino sino ba naman ang nakakaalam di ba pero meron kasi naramdaman ang Panginoon na lumabas sa kanya by that touch amen 
So, <clears throat> of course, there were dozens of people touching him and bumping into him that day. A fact pointed out by the disciples. But her touch was different. Amen? It was a touch accompanied by faith. Many touched him, but only one touch with with only one touch him with the fingers of faith. Amen. Sa dami ng dumidikit sa kanya, isa lang ang may pananampalataya. Amen. Minsan, ang dami po na nakikinig sa salita ng Panginoon. Ang dami po na tumanggap sa ating Panginoon, pero very few are really have that faith in the Lord. Sa mga panahon na yung bang parang katapusan na parang it, in our hopeless situation, minsan nawawala yung ating pananampalataya sa Panginoon. In, the, in those times na parang eh, wala na, wala nang pag-asa ang sitwasyon ko, hindi na talaga maayos yung visa ko or hindi na talaga ako makakaroon ng trabaho. In our hopeless situation, Yeshua is there. Huwag po natin, lalo pa dapat tayong manampalataya, mag-trust sa ating Panginoon because He is our only hope. Amen. So, Jesus could let her walk away with physical healing, but He called her out because He wanted to give and move beyond her superstitious faith. He wanted her soul. Ang nature ng tao, mga kapatid, is that when we are sick, we tend to cry out and cry and cry before the Lord. Pero kapag gumaling na, nawala na. In, in, a, in a five months, six months, after a year, nawala na naman yung strong faith na gaya ng faith nung may sakit siya, nung na-heal siya. Sometimes when we are being healed, tapos pagkatapos ng ilang taon, nawala na naman yung yung faith natin. Amen? We only have that faith kung may kailangan tayo. Dapat po yung ating pananampalataya sa Panginoon in good times and in bad, we have to trust the Lord. We have to have faith in the Lord <coughs> that He is always there for us. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's continue. <coughs> so our Lord Jesus did not need to learn the woman's, woman's identity hindi na kailangan ng Panginoon, hindi niya hinahanap ang babae para makilala or what. But he what, our Yeshua wants to, uh, gusto niya na makita yung testimony na ng babaeng ito kung paano siya na heal. Amen? Sa Mark 5.42, uh, sabi niya dito, Mark does not tell us that Jesus looked to see who touched him, but he looked around to see the woman who had done this. Amen? God is an all-knowing God. Alam niya. Alam na alam niya kung sino yung nakatas sa kanya, pero meron siyang gustong ipahiwati, kaya niya hinanap ang babae. So our Lord want to give this woman the opportunity to give testimony to her healing. Gusto ng Panginoon na ipahayag ng babae kung ano ang nangyari sa kanya. Sometimes in our, uh, sa church natin, minsan di ba kapag merong ginawa ang Panginoon sa atin, we have to be proud, we have to glorify God by testifying the goodness of God. Going to the front, di ba, by, by portion na meron tayong testimony time. Minsan, ayaw pa nating tumayo, nahihiya tayo. We should be proud, we should be, because God is being glorified whenever we testify that God has done something in our lives. God has answered our long time prayers. Kaya, kaya uh, dapat po nating i-testify that so that others will be blessed at makita nila kung paano kumilos ang Panginoon sa buhay natin. Amen? If Jesus did not stop and ask who touched his garments, no one would have known of the miracle that she, that the miracle done by Yeshua to the woman. When she saw the eyes of Jesus, nung nakita ng, ng babae na nakatingin sa kanya ang Panginoon, she knew that alam ng Panginoon na siya 
yung nakatouch sa kanya, di ba? She had taken nothing from him but he had given healing to her. So in verse 33, sabi niya dito, but, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole story. He fell down. Kumbaga, yung talagang yumuko siya sa paanan ng Panginoon. At with, with fear, takot na takot siya at sinabi niya lahat ng katotohanan na nangyari sa kanyang buhay that she was been sick with flowing of blood for 12 years and in an instant ay nahil siya nagamot siya na she, she got well instantly so nakita natin dito that this was when Jesus spoke to this woman you will notice that she fell before him in fear it was a sign of humility and humbleness bihira siguro natin gawin ito di ba <coughs> sa ating buhay, ilang beses ba natin ba't natin na lumuhod sa Panginoon? Di ba it is a sign that we are humbling ourselves before the Lord? When times na we are being touched by the, the, by, by the Lord, we really humble ourselves by bowing. Amen? By, by uh, kneeling down and thanking God for His goodness. Amen? Hallelujah! This was the very reason she came silently from behind him to touch him. This was why she did not come to him openly. She was afraid she would be rejected. She probably expected Jesus to lash out at her for touching him. She thought he would treat her like everyone else would have treated her. Akala niya siguro na ko, gaya ng ibang taos, siguro yung papagalitan siya or i, -i uh, yung bang i ano siya i defile siya dahil natinatch niya ang Panginoon pero hindi ganon ang pagtrato sa kanya ng Panginoon she was trembling with fear kasi uh, natatakot siya na kung paano trinit ng tao kung paano siya trinit ng tao being uh, uh, a woman who is defiled Baka ganun din yung pag-treat sa kanya ng ating Panginoon pero she was wrong. Nakita niya na ang, di ba, sabi ng Panginoon, go in peace and be healed. Amen? Hallelujah. So Jesus got the response from her. He had wanted and anticipated. She bowed at his feet and confessed everything to him. This was a public outward acknowledgement of what happened in her heart she was different and she was a ashamed, ashamed to tell others about it di ba maaring sa pagsabi niya sa katotohanan sa Panginoon maari pa rin siyang hulihin ng mga uh, doon sa sa mga kinauukulan doon sa panahon na yun dahil nga nalaman nila na she was she was a defiled woman tapos ganun nga na Tinatch niya ang Panginoon na bawal na bawal sa panahon na yun. But then, hindi siya nahiyang ipahayag kung paano siya nagamot, how she was instantly healed. Ganon din po dapat sa atin. Huwag tayong mahiya. Ano man ang nakaraan natin, nakaraan na yun. I know that we have, I, I, I understand that we have a dark past. We have testimonies of uh, mga ang ginawa natin ng mga kasalanan, ng mga nakakahiya, pero we have, we don't have to be ashamed of it dahil nakaraan na yun. We are being forgiven by the Lord and we are now a new creation. Amen? We are now God's children. Malinis na tayo sa harapan ng Panginoon. Kaya't anuman ang mga nakaraan natin, kapag tinanggap natin ang Panginoon at, and we ask, Forgiveness from our hearts, wala na po yun. Tinanggal na, forgiven na, at hindi na yun isisingil pa ng Panginoon. Ganun, ganun po ang nangyari sa babaeng ito. So this woman cast out, uncared, uncared for, and unwanted had caught the eye of God because she exercised 
simple, childlike faith. Nakita ng Panginoon yung pananampalataya niya. Di ba ang daming, ang daming nagtatas sa Panginoon pero isa lang among all the people in the crowd, isa lang yung merong pananampalataya ng gaya ng babaeng ito. And her faith has healed her. Amen. So, we should never be ashamed to share our testimony to others. God looks at how strong and firm our faith. It will make us well. Never fear that God doesn't love and care about us. So Jesus became man in the first place so he could die on the cross. Sa Philippians 2, 5 to 8. Philippians Yes, chapter 2, 5 to 8, Holy Spirit, bless your holy words. Let this mind be in which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in, like, in likeness of men. And being found in appearance of men, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the to the death of the cross. So that is the reason why Jesus came for us to be free from every sin, from every disease, from every bondage that Satan did for us in the past. No, hindi pa natin kilala ang Panginoon. Amen? So, but he also be, became man so that he could be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Ano man ang mga sakit natin, hindi man physical disease, emotional man, whatever uh, we are undergoing, Jesus, nothing is impossible with God. With one touch, by our faith, pwede tayong ihil ng Panginoon. Amen? He became flesh so that we could touch Him. Amen. Hallelujah. So the woman got more than physical healing that day. All her adult life, she had been an outcast, nobody, dwelling in isolation and loneliness, living in the shadows of society, but now she hears that she has been taken in by God. Her faith brought her into a soul-saving relationship with Yeshua Hamaseya. One minute she was an outcast and, and she was in the family, and the next she was in the family of God. Di ba ganun din po sa atin? In the past... We were children of the devil. But when we accepted Jesus Christ, we are now the children of the Most High God. Amen. So, so Jesus tells her to go in peace, verse 34. His words let her know that she has done the right thing in coming to him and touching him. Any other man in that crowd would have been offended and angered. In, his, in this deceased woman who intentionally touched him, but not Jesus. The woman got healed and she knew it. But these final words of Jesus, thy faith had made you well. Drive home the fact that she had finally and fully free from her plug. Uh, noon pala, kapag may mga sakit na ganon, they are considered, it is considered a curse. So she was totally healed in in the sickness in her curse and life would never be the same again her battle with this dread disease was forever finished she had received a brand new life from from he had from the hand of the lord yeshua hamaseya amen hallelujah purihin ang panginoon so i hope that every one of us has Learn a lot from this lesson. Sa conclusion na po tayo. So this woman experienced healing. Miracle. Not because she touched his garment or God's, Yeshua's garment. But because she exercised faith in Jesus and his power. When her faith touched his power, his power changed her life. Amen. Do you need to get to Jesus today? There is help in getting to him. Whether you are lost in sin or whether you are battling difficulty, Yeshua is the answer. Nothing is impossible to Him. If you have reached the place where all other remedies have failed 
all other means have exhausted themselves and you need help right now i want you to invite you to i want to invite you tonight to come to yeshua you know that in the crowd that day there were thousands of people with physical and emotional needs but only one lady got any help doesn't touch jesus but only one was transformed amen isa lang sa lahat ng nakasalamuhan ng panginoon isa lang yung naligtas ng panginoon dahil sa kanyang matinding pananampalataya why only one person look at jesus through the eyes of faith only one person believe jesus could help her only one person whatever she had to do to touch him only that person was made whole don't be one of those people who simply brush up against jesus and live unchanged if you need help come to him he has the power to change our situation if we need help get to, G to yeshua and touch him by faith amen as i have said miracles happen when we have faith in god hallelujah purihin ang panginoon and i uh, as we go on to our closing prayer i it is always my prayer that god has something in store for us tonight through his holy words i know that may kanya kanya tayong mga pinagdadaanan we might be well but sometimes in our spiritual life we we sometimes we feel like we are dry it's now time to come to the lord cry out to him sabihin natin lord i miss you at medyo na drain out ako i i i am listening to all the live streaming pero parang nothing is happening parang hindi ako na feed or parang nothing is uh hindi ako nasa satisfied lord i need you just cry out to the lord cry out to the lord amen so let's all bow down our heads and let us pray to those who want to receive jesus now is the time hindi po natin alam bukas makalawa kukunin na tayo so now is the time to submit ourselves to the lord accept him as our lord and savior and right now i want to invite you to pray with me pray after me as i lead you the prayer of acceptance amen hallelujah Panginoon, salamat sa iyong salita ngayong gabi. Salamat, Panginoon, sa buhay ng babae na kung paano mo siya binigyan ng pag-asa sa kanyang hopeless situation. Alam ko po, Panginoon, ganon din po ako ngayon. Lord, salamat ulod sa iyong salita na nagbigay liwanag sa akin. Sa pagkakatong ito, humihingi po ako ng kapatawaran sa lahat ng pagkukulang ko sa iyo. O, o Lord, patawarin mo ako sa mga nagawa kong pagkakasala, pagkakamali, sa kakulangan ko ng pananampalataya sa iyo. Sa oras na ito, Panginoon, binubuksan ko ang pintuan ng aking puso at tinatanggap kita bilang Panginoon at tagapaglintas. Ikaw na po ang maghari sa puso ko. Ikaw na po ang masunod sa buhay ko. Isulat mo ang aking pangalad sa aklat ng buhay upang sa pagdating mo Panginoon ay makasama kita sa aklat sa sa iyong kaharian. Salamat Panginoon sa buhay na walang hanggan na pinangako mo sa bawat tatanggap at mananampalataya sa iyo. Ito ang aking dalangin sa matamis na pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let us all pray for our closing prayer. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words tonight. Thank you Lord na hindi man namin naranasan ang sitwasyon ng babae na to sa iyong salita Panginoon pero alam namin O Lord God na there are times in our lives that we feel empty there are times in our lives na we feel dry in our Christian life Lord restore the joy of our salvation bigyan mo kami ng pag-asa in our hopeless situation Panginoon Lord we miss you We always want to know you more. We always want to feel your presence in our lives, Panginoon. Lord, hindi po sapat 
na kilala ka namin, kundi Lord, gusto namin laging maramdaman yung presensya mo sa buhay namin. Ano man, O Lord God, ang mga kulang sa amin, Lord, punuin mo ito, Panginoon. Kung kulang kami, O Lord, sa panalangin, kung kulang kami, Panginoon, sa sa pananampalataya sa iyo, Lord, increase our faith, O God. Huwag mong hayaan na kami ay lumamig sa iyo, Panginoon. Fill us, O Lord God, with the faith that comes from you. Increase our faith, O Lord God, like the faith of Abraham, like the faith of this woman, O Lord God, that in her hopeless situation, Panginoon, I, you have healed her because of her faith to you, O Lord God. Give us the faith like this woman, O God. Hallelujah. Salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong salita. And tonight, O Lord God, be our guide, be our teacher, be our life, O Lord God, in our situation na minsan hindi namin maintindihan. Salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong salita na nagbibigay pag-asa sa amin. Salamat, O Lord. We give you all the glory, the honor, the highest adoration that belongs to you alone. In Yeshua's mighty name, Amen. Amen. Shalom everyone. Let us all uh, stand by for the response song by Sister Gladys and Sister.